Hi, good afternoon. My name is Napoleon Vibokena Jr. and I am your discussant for this afternoon. So since that uh, our last reporter, Jayco Aranya, have tackled about the sampling, so we are already know what it's meaning. So for now, I am discussing about what what is the disadvantages of sampling. So the disadvantages of sampling. The reliability of the sample depends upon the appropriateness of the sampling method. The purpose of sampling theory is to make sampling more efficient, but the real difficulties lie in selection, estimation, and administration of samples. So here are some of the following uh, disadvantages of sampling. So the number one disadvantage of sampling is the chances of bias. So the serious limitation of the sampling method is that it involves biased selection and thereby leads us to draw erroneous conclusions. Bias arises when the method of selection of sample employed as faulty. Relative small samples properly selected may be much more reliable than large samples poorly selected. So the second disadvantage of sampling is difficulties in selecting a truly representative sample. So difficulties in selecting a truly representative sample produces reliable and accurate results only when they are representative of the whole group. Selection of a truly representative sample is difficult when the phenomena under study are a complex nature. Selecting good sample is difficult. So the third disadvantage of sampling is inadequate knowledge in the subject. So use of sampling method requires adequate subject-specific knowledge in sampling technique. Sampling involves statistical analysis and calculation of probable error. When the researcher lacks specialized knowledge in sampling, he may commit serious mistakes. Consequently, the results of the study will be misleading. So, the fourth disadvantages of sampling is changeability of units. So when the units of the populations are not inhomogeneous, the sampling technique will be unscientific. In sampling, though the number of cases is small, it is not always easy to stick to the selected cases. The units of sample may be widely dispersed. Some of the cases of sample may not cooperate with the researcher and some others may be inaccessible. Because of these problems, all the cases may not be taken up. The selected cases may have to be replaced by other cases. Changeability of units stands in the way of results of the study. So, the last disadvantages of sampling is impossibility of sampling. So, deriving a representative sample is difficult. When the universe is too small or too heterogeneous. In this case, census study is the only alternative. Moreover, in studies requiring a very high standard of accuracy, the sampling method may be in unsuitable. There will be a chances of errors even if samples are drawn most carefully. So those are the disadvantages of sampling or defective sampling. So we are going to our next topic, which is the general types of sampling. So I have get the, uh, the examples of the general sampling, which is the uh, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. So probability sampling scheme is one in which every unit in the population has a chance or a greater than zero of being selected in the sample and this probability can be accur accurately determined when every element in the population does has the same probability it's known as 
equal probability of selection, ESP. That kind of design also referred to us as self-weighting because all of the same units are given the same weights. And here are some the types of probability sampling, but uh, there is someone who are going to discuss that kinds of or the types of sampling. So the next one is non-probability sampling. Any sampling method for some elements of population have no chance of selections. So it involves the selection of elements based on assumptions regarding the population of interest, which forms the criteria for selection. For example, if we visit every household uh, on a given street and interview the first person to answer the door, if any household with more than one occupant, that is a non-probability sample because some people more likely to answer that it is as where unemployed persons or perhaps mothers taking their taking care of their kids and etc so here are the types of non probability sampling but i am not going to discuss it by one by one because there are assigned there are someone assigned uh, who are going to discuss it. So, in addition, non-response effect may turn any probability design into non-probability design. If the characteristic of non-responses uh, are not well understood, since non-responses effectively uh, modified each element probability of being sampled. So, those are the example of the general types of sampling. So, which is the probability sampling and non-probability sampling. I hope that each and every one of you understand my report and I hope that you get some of ideas and knowledge about it. Again, this is me, Napoleon G. Bocchena Jr. And I'm, I am your discussant for this afternoon. Thank you so much.